up everybody how you doing let's get into today's episode hey, hey, hey. Ah! let's get into today's episode hello beloveds and welcome to today's episode of beanie tv where i offer you sprinkles a spiritual sassiness and teach you how to mind your own blissness first i want to apologize my microphone broke so please excuse the audio and um, I hope that does not deter you from continuing to watch this video. But as you know, we start every video with an affirmation. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Go ahead and place your left hand over your heart, your right hand over the bottom of your belly for your womb area space. Take a deep breath in. Release. I am my own home. I am my own home. I am my own home. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Release. <sighs> Amazing. I am so happy to be back with you all. I missed you all, but I really needed to take time for myself and fill up my own cup so that I could be the best version of myself for my community and i just want to say thank you so much for all of the beautiful blessings messages that you have sent me i know i got one message saying like um please take your time and when you will be here when you come back and i know that i pop in here and there but this is my first video since the summertime so i just want to say thank you so much um, one of my goals for the for next year, 2022, is to hit 20, is to hit 13,000 subscribers by January 20, 2022. So if you're watching this, please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell because um, I will continue to bring content like this to your doorstep and your video screens. I feel like welcome my beautiful wonderful whole divine feminine higher self phoenix hello everyone hello abina beanie tv thank you so much phoenix for being here showing yourself to the world it is all you boo i love you so much you are really my guiding light i am so thankful to have met you thank you for being a part of my life all of my life. I am so happy that you are here and that you get to show my community who you are. And if you want more Phoenix, let her know in the comments below. Hello everyone, I am Phoenix. I am Abina's higher self. I am so happy and so thankful to be called here today to be with you. I am Abina's higher self. I am the one that assists her through her decisions. I am her intuition. I am really her twin flame, her true soulmate, and I'm so thankful and so happy to be here with you. Abina, it is a pleasure to have be, to be by your side and to really love you and to know you. Um, I just want to bring everyone into my space right now, okay? Are we, are we okay with that? All right, amazing. I ask that you hold your hands up, allowing the universe to know that you are ready to receive. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Release. At this moment in time, you are exactly where you are meant to be. You are how you are meant to be. You look exactly how you are meant to look. And you feel, however that is, exactly how you are meant to feel. The only person that matters in this moment in time is you. The only time in your life that matters right now is the right now. Universe, whoever is watching this, allow them to know that they are deserving of receiving a healed heart, an open heart a warm heart and so it is i really want to focus on spiritual self-care and one of the things that i'm always pulling abina to do is to work with her crystals 
So today I have her Clear Quartz Crystal, which is just an amazing crystal for clearing out energy. We want to focus on the heart chakra. The heart chakra and the heart itself, the organ, carries so much emotions. A lot of people with cardiovascular dis-ease and with a lot of heart problems, heart palpitations, have a lot of blocked emotions. The heart is meant to, the heart pumps, the heart pumps are vital nutrients in our blood. It is a very important organ. We want to always make sure that our capillaries and our arteries are always clear and flowing without any blockages and when you have hurt heartbreak within your heart your organs are affected and what we want to do is take these high vibrating um, pieces of mother earth of asasiya as we call it in ghana and we really want to allow this crystal to energetically remove the energy that you might not see but it is there it is in your cells so take a moment with me and place your crystal onto your heart you can get your clear quartz you can get any pink or green crystal uh, pink and green are the colors of the heart chakra so if you have a watermelon tourmaline pink quartz a venturine whatever Go ahead and place it on your heart. Close your eyes. I allow this crystal to take the pain out of my heart. I allow this crystal to absorb the emotional pain in my heart. I free myself from the emotional pain in my heart. I forgive my mother, I forgive my father, I forgive those who were abused and who abused me. They can't have my heart. I let it go. And you continue this for as long as you need, as long as you want. Don't fight back the tears. Really, it's all about releasing, letting go. Abina has worked years on healing her heart. Before Abina really went into her Saturn return, she didn't know, but her heart was completely blocked, full of emotional pain. And once she started releasing that energetic tar, that energetic debris, Avina can fully and completely feel her heart chakra. So it is open, it is flowing. And um, that's how you know. You know, that's how you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something right. When you, even right now, although I am Avina's higher self, I am here in her body, in the 3D realm. And I can feel right now Avina's heart chakra is completely open, in love, willing and able to give and receive love. Please know that a lot of the people that abused you really had no love in their heart and in their life. And their pain in their heart is just pouring out onto you. And, and um, I just want you to understand that by you healing your heart, that's the main key. That's the biggest key. And now I want to move on to a book that is near and dear to our heart, um, Own Your Glow by Latham Thomas. Abina is a level one doula trainee from the Mama Glow doula school owned by Latham Thomas. And Abina really devoured this book. It came into her life maybe three or four years ago. I'm sure she's mentioned it on this channel, but it is full of full moon, new moon, uh, rituals, self-care meals, self-care drinks, self-care snacks. It is really an amazing book to, if you don't know where to start, and I know the internet is there, we know, you can go on Instagram, you can go on TikTok, but you can also have something tangible, right? Something that you can have for, for the rest of your life that won't <laughs> one day get deleted without your permission, without your power, right? So we highly recommend um, getting this book on your glow while you are on your healing journey. And last but not least, what is a higher self without... <gasps> 
a tower reading. So this is a general reading for the collective. If you are watching this video, take what resonates and leave the rest. Um, as many of you know, Avina is a highly intuitive empath and is able, is clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient. Avina is very, very good at being able to see people's, see the truth. She's able to see the truth and she's also a dream messenger. So, oh, there is a message for you. What message do you have for the collective? Spirit, what message do you have for the collective? Spirit, what message do you have for the collective? Spirit, what message do you have for the people that are watching this? Spirit, what message do you have for the people that, oh, wow. Spirit, wow. Oh, wow. One more. One more card. Wow. Okay, so I am saying well because we shot this video 10 minutes ago and the microphone broke. So that's why I don't have a microphone right now. And I got two of the same cards from the other reading. I'm gonna show, we're gonna put it in this video now, but I wanna show you, Spirit really, really wants you to know this thing. So this is what we pulled. We've got the Knight of Cups in reverse. I've never even seen that card. We've got the Seven of Cups. We've got Two of Cups and Two of Swords. These were the two cards that showed up in the previous um, reading of these two. So for the Two of Cups is divine union, connection, collaborating, coming together. A lot of you have been waiting for your partners, waiting for your creative partner, waiting for the right friend, waiting, waiting for the right um, business partner, and they are coming, okay? They are coming, they are here. This is double confirmation, because again, this card came out before, and I am so happy and excited for you, but yes, Two of Cups, your boo, your twin flame, your soulmate is coming, okay? Seven of Cups talks about so many decisions. Right now, you want to be in gratitude for all the decisions you have because it is a blessing to have many decisions. But it is important to make the right choice, Two of Swords. And the only way you're going to be able to make the right choice is, as you can see with the Two of Swords, and the moon is you can only make this choice intuitively, meaning through prayer, meditation, journaling, going out in nature and allowing spirit to help you. Asking spirit, help me make this decision. You're only going to be able to know what, um, what decision to make. And uh, not all that glitters is gold. So even if something seems amazing, even if something seems beautiful amazing it could be rotting underneath so that's why you really want to stick to your intuition with opportunities um, again this is a general reading and so if you are reading this if you are watching this um, be sure with major decisions that are coming things that are just like whoa this is amazing I can't believe this happened to me go to spirit first for confirmation anything you say no to spirit is going to bring it back to you double and that's just all about faith the knight of cups amazing so this all ties together the knight of cups is all about romance beauty vision bringing your big ideas to uh to fruition right so if you have an idea whether that is um, creating an album, writing a book, an ebook, starting a YouTube channel, starting a fashion line, starting a cosmetic line, whatever it is, this is the green light to start now. Um, and know that any decisions that you are making with this new venture, you have to make it intuitively. <laughs> like we said, with the Seven of Cups and the Two of Swords, it's intuitive. It is really allowing your spirit and your heart to guide you and you need to have an open heart a cleared heart baby in order to make pure intuitive decisions so this all just comes full circle and it is just so beautiful and the white horse represents purity and spirituality so anything you do even if it is something that is not spiritual at all bring yourself 
You are the light. You are a spiritual being. Bring yourself to that. And, and, and spirit will be there for you and with you. And another thing about the Knight of Cups, it's not, it's not about charging forward. It's not about like, oh my God, bam, got to do this now. It's more about take your time. It's a marathon. You've already won, so have fun in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the collective. But at the end of the day, you're doing a good job, bitch. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job, bitch. You're doing a good job. Collective, whoever is watching this, whoever is reading this, clear the collective from the deck. You are doing brilliantly, okay? Whether it was this pull or the last one, you are amazing. We are in a completely, you are in a new, completely new level. Allow the level to be, allow, allow, allow. That's all spirit is saying is just allow the new to be. Indulge, have fun, spend your money, be human, enjoy being human. Okay, like really just open, 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 allow, allow, allow. This is an amazing, and the more you allow, the more you feel good, you're gonna draw that union, you're gonna draw those opportunities, and you have done the work, so you know how to discern. I love it, amazing. Um, I wanna thank, of course, Abina Beanie TV, who is so beautiful, and we are so happy to see how much she has grown, and I just wanna thank all of you um, I, I, I hope that this served you. I hope this encouraged you to connect with your higher self. I love you so much. Your higher self loves you. Connect with them. And I just want to close this out by saying you are beautiful. You are present. You are worthy of all the happiness within yourself and outside of yourself. Continue doing what you're doing because you're doing the right thing. You are right. So first I want to thank you for your bravery and your courage for clicking on this video. Narcissistic abuse is something that is beautifully, wonderfully coming to light now thanks to being in the age of technology. A lot of people are waking up to see that their parents and their parents' parents and their parents before them all suffered from the same dis-ease, which is narcissistic personality disorder, which metaphysically really just means that this person really did not receive any type of love, affection, affirming, you know, gift giving from a positive place. They did not have a positive, loving, healthy upbringing um, with their own parents. And so with that pain, they have now turned into some of the most evil people on earth. A narcissist is someone that is in such deep, deep emotional pain from not receiving love that now they have um, decided that everyone's against them. It's all about them. It's only about how can someone give me what I've never had. But the thing about narcissistic personality disorder is that there is no end to their, their hunger pain. There is no end to it. So even if they go to therapy, even if they <laughs> try to become be on the enlightened path it really is not something that can be healed you know that's how they are that's the way they will be and that is what their soul decided to be before this before they incarnated here on this earth now empaths like myself i am a highly intuitive empath I, the soul that I am, the advanced soul that I am, I've lived many lives. And in this life, I had to come into a family with deep narcissistic personality disorder, many generations of it. And I had to come to break that and free that. And I don't like to use the word narcissistic abuse survivor. I like to use the word warrior. Because do you know that you are a warrior? For you, as a child, to 
as a soul to say, hey, I'm going to let my, my, my child human self go through this painful narcissistic parent energy um, and knowing that one day I'll come through and I'll come out of it. That's a warrior. A warrior goes into war fiercely head on knowing that they may or may not survive. They may or may not come out, but they're going to take that risk. They're going to challenge. So I just want to clap for you and let you know that you are a warrior. You're not a survivor. You're a warrior. Okay. And you are higher and better and greater than any narcissist you have ever met because you had pain. You endured pain from that narcissist and you still love every day and you still stay in light and in compassion and in enlightenment and consciousness every day. But the thing is, you don't want to be like me for so many months and get trapped in one day this person will change. One day this person is going to love me. One day this person is going to see me and not and not as an extension of them. That's what narcissists like to do. They like to make, they don't see you. They see themselves. And if they hate themselves, they hate you. They don't like themselves, they don't like you. You know how many times I've had my mother tell me that she doesn't like me? And then I go out in the world and people and students and teachers gravitate towards me and show me so much love and show me so much caring so growing up it was so confusing it was so confusing living in a home with someone that really doesn't like you because they don't like themselves and then going out in the world and being treated almost like a superstar it was very conflicting but it doesn't matter what happened in the house it doesn't matter outside the house it happened it's all about how i had to really do these three years of deep work. I have a video on my Saturn's return. My Saturn's return was in my fourth house, Saturn Capricorn, um, fourth house. Fourth house is the mother, right? That's family. And I have, I had to learn that as an empath, I had to learn to speak up for myself, activating my throat chakra, putting up boundaries, confirming those boundaries and accepting that my mother and father and grandmother and aunts and so many so many cousins because the, the 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 trauma is so rampant that i had to accept that they are their own people and i am an individual i am not an extension of them i am my own person but when you're a child your subconscious just takes on everything so you can sit here and say i believe in myself i believe in myself but your subconscious which was um, raised by the narcissistic parent who always doubts you, who always questions, makes you second guess yourself, who always says no to every idea that you have. And these are my personal, this is what I personally went through. Um, so you have this seed of self doubt. One example of narcissistic personality disorder, which is very subtle, it's so subtle, is every time I would tell my parent um, something good, like, oh my God, I just bought a new necklace. They, the first thing that they always said was, the first thing they always did was um, like ask questions, right? And ask questions like, oh, I wonder where this was made or um, I, I want something like that. Never, ever. Did they ever come with, amazing, I'm proud of you, great job. They never met me at the level of excitement that I was at with anything. Everything turned around, it's, it's, it's because of them I'm, I'm, I'm this person today. It's because of them I'm an actor. It's because of them I'm accomplished. It's because of them. And you know, you live in that lie. And there's days where I have accomplished something so great and I don't even allow it to be a big deal because the people that I was raised around never made my huge accomplishments big deals. And I watch TV and I see people throwing people um, um, watch parties, right? So um, if you guys 
know or don't know, I was an actor in LA and I was on the show Shameless. And my family members watched the show and then one of them came to me and told me that I was speaking our dialect wrong, right? And then I'm watching TV and I see people throwing their family and friends who are actors watch parties, like giving them gifts, telling them how proud they are. It, so it's the most subtle things, right? And one of the biggest things that really helped me um, become a true warrior was one, remembering that mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister are just words with, con with societal conditioning, uh, with so societally conditioned expectations. A mom is supposed to be nurturing, loving, caring, soft. A dad is supposed to be a provider, a protector, you know, uh, like kind of like a tough guy there to be there for you. A grandmother's supposed to be da da da. No, that's not true. That's not true. Those are roles that humans have created. And we put those expectations on our parents when our parents are just people and we are just people. They are full, complex, layered humans and so are we so once you take off mom dad and see them as they are you can stop playing the role of child obedient child respectful child especially if you're Ghanaian like me respectful polite well behaved never just being your fucking self right so when you take away the words mom, dad, grandma, and you see the person as they are in their trauma, in their drama, and making sure that you're asking your parents, how were you raised? Because they obviously were not called to be the generational curse breaker like you. Take that mom, dad, take those societal expectations off of them and off of yourself too. A mom is supposed to be this. Who said that? Who said that? Women and men are designed specifically for specific things, yes. But once trauma, lack of love, pain sets in, forget it. So I struggled with that a long time, having expectations on my family members. And then once I took those rose-colored glasses off and saw them as they were, I was like, oh, okay, y'all don't see me. Y'all don't see me, y'all don't know me, y'all don't care about me because your pain is so thick and so heavy, you can't see this light and you don't want to see this light. And so I have to move on and move forward. And um, the second thing I will say is stop calling your parents mom and dad. Just call them by their first name because that'll take you out of this, I'm the adult child. No, you're an adult. <laughs> you're an adult. You don't owe them anything. The soul that you were came, decided that you were going to come to that family. So the only person you owe your anything to is yourself. We have to get out of this idea that we owe our parents something for what? Having sex and, and, and getting pregnant? <laughs> and doing what they were designed to do, which was provide a healthy home um, a root or sorry to provide home food and shelter don't let your parents sit here and say I did love you I did take care of you you didn't you had a roof over your head didn't you you had clothes didn't you yeah but that's you don't get a cookie for um, I don't know <laughs> not killing me but at the end of the day every human being deserves shelter f clean food clean water and affection, words of affirmation, to know that they are somebody, to know that they are worthy, to know that they are special. It doesn't have to be and or. So never let your parent try to guilt you into um, being ungrateful, okay? We're not playing that game anymore because we are warriors. Now, it takes time. Last year, I did a healing the mother wound meditation. And it was me and three other young women who have all had that mother wound, that father wound. And we sat and we cried. And we, a lot of them, they walked away with realizations. 
realizing that, wait, it's my mother or my father never made anything about me. Or they were in so much pain and so much rage that they would beat me for the smallest things. They would insult me for the smallest things because that pain and that rage, it's right there. It's when I realized that the people that I was um, raised by were narcissists or suffered from narcissistic um, personality disorder, I was heartbroken and I had to fill my heart up with my own love. And that is the thing, is that being an empath born into a narcissistic family, you are the champion. Because not only are you compassionate and soft and sensitivity is not weak, sensitivity is strong. To be able to be sensitive in this third dimension, you are a warrior, like I said, you are a champion. But to be able to be sensitive and delicate and soft and tender and put up boundaries and stand your ground and say no with conviction baby you're unstoppable and that's why spirit was like you are i love you so much and i'm sure there have been lifetimes where i was a narcissist i'm sure do you know how many lifetimes it takes to become an empath do you know how many lifetimes it takes to become an empowered empath like i said before i'm an advanced so I have been coming to earth school, I don't even know for how long, okay? So please know that you are a warrior, you are a champion, you are not too sensitive, you are not too delicate, you are not too tender, you are perfectly made in his image, okay? The lighting is getting funny, so I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. Help me reach my goal of 13K by January 2022 by subscribing to this, um, youtube channel put the notification bells on i will be coming i'm here i'm back on youtube and i'm so happy and so thankful that you guys have been riding with me for these past eight years as always be sure to shop salome shea for all of your ethically sourced eco-friendly eco luxurious products ethically sourced from ghana west africa and please know as a narcissistic abuse warrior you are designed for this you got this, okay? It's not about being strong. It's about crumbling. And it's about building yourself up. Why do you think I named my higher self Phoenix? To rise from the ashes. In Harry Potter, there's, I don't remember which one, but it talks, oh, the Order of the Phoenix, where it talks about how the tears of the Phoenix are healing, okay? You can call your higher self Phoenix too if you want. I love you so much. Please know that everyone's journey is completely different, but what we all have in common is that we are warriors and champions. I love you. Be sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comment in the comments. Let me know in the comments your experience with narcissistic abuse. Please know that my channel is a completely safe space. So anything you want to share, please know that you can and um, if you want another episode like this, I'm happy to do it. I love you. You are worthy. You are deserving. You matter. Your tenderness is beautiful.